Welcome to Ghost Controls. We are a U.S. corporation and the preeminent manufacturer of do-it-yourself gate openers. Our design team, with over 25 years of experience, has been recognized as bringing the most innovative products to market. In a recent survey of U.S. consumers, when asked what they wanted to see in future products, they overwhelmingly responded with three things, fast, quiet, and reliable. Hence, Ghost Controls has responded with a new generation of products that include lifetime warranty on gear motors, superior RF range when using transmitters, and double shear hardware for quiet, smooth operation. New patented features such as party mode, party mode secure, and vacation mode provide owners with an unparalleled level of convenience. Thank you for purchasing our products. We hope this installation video is helpful. Should you require any additional assistance, please don't hesitate to contact us. This video is designed to be used in conjunction with the installation manual, which contains detailed diagrams, information, and illustrations not shown in the video. The manual also contains a list of tools and other items you may need for proper installation. Please refer to the installation manual when installing your system. Before installing your system, it's advised that the overall layout be considered in its entirety. Some important things to consider are, if using a wooden post, it should be a six by six and set in concrete. Metal posts should be at least three inches in diameter, also set in concrete. Consider the placement of the control box and battery box. Consider how the system battery will be charged, AC or solar power. If using solar power, where will you place the solar panel? If using AC power, a power outlet needs to be within 1,000 feet and should be on a circuit protected by a GFCI plug or breaker. The AC transformer should be located in a weatherproof box. Never attempt to use solar power and AC power at the same time. What devices will be used to operate the gate? Keypad, remote, vehicle sensor? If using the zombie lock automatic gate lock, is there enough room to mount the lock at the other end of the gate? It's also advised that you watch the installation video in its entirety prior to installing your gate system. For more information about planning your system, consult the owner's manual or go to support at ghostcontrols.com. This is the operator arm. This is the wireless keypad. And this is the wireless remote transmitter. This is the system control box. Check that the gate post is plumb and the gate is level. The gate should swing freely with minimum effort to the open and closed position without hindrance. Determine the position and level of the gate operator, which should be as much in the center of the gate as possible. Using a level, mark the center line on the post for the mounting bracket. Align the vertical center of the bracket with the center line you marked on the post. Use a clamp to hold the bracket in place. Move the gate to the open position and make sure the position of the bracket will allow four to four and a half inches of clearance for the gate operator. The screw slots on the bracket are designed to make slight adjustments for this allowance. If using a push to open system, make sure the extended post pivot brackets have been installed and move the gate to the fully closed position before attaching the clamps to the gate. The post pivot brackets are optional and not included in your kit. Again, make sure there is four to four and a half inches of clearance between the gate and the holes at the end of the bracket. Mark drill holes on the post, preferably in the center of the slots, 
so that the bracket can be adjusted for fine tuning the position. Drill the holes and mount the bracket as shown. Using the supplied bushing and clevis pin, attach the operator to the bracket. Mount the control box, making sure that it's close enough to attach the cable from the operator arm. There are several places on the control box where screws can be used to mount the box. Mount the battery box next to the control box. You will find it easier to feed the battery harness cable through the strain relief on the bottom of the control box first. Then feed the cable from the operator arm through the same opening. Connect the operator arm wires to the control box as shown in the manual and tighten the contact screws. Each slot is color coded to indicate the proper color for each wire for your convenience. Make sure the wires are not inserted too far into the slots and that the wire insulation is not interfering with the contact of the wire to the board. Place the battery inside the box. There's room for one additional battery, which is recommended for solar applications. At this point, you may want to check the dip switch options to ensure smooth operation. Please refer to the owner's manual for correct settings. The antenna for the wireless remote will already be attached to the control box. However, you may need to place it in a different spot for better reception. If so, simply unscrew the antenna and use a standard coax television cable to connect the antenna to the box. Now connect your battery harness to the control board. Make sure you connect red to red and black to black. Turn the unit on. You will hear a series of beeps. Using the jog buttons located at the top of the control board, make sure that the unit is operating properly. Once power is active, you will see a green LED light at the top of the board, indicating that the system is charging. Below the power status light is a yellow battery condition light. If the light is constant, the battery is charged enough to operate your system. If the light is blinking, the battery is low and you will need to charge the battery before operating properly. Below the battery condition light is the status light, which only activates when the system is performing a function. Now it's time to attach the gate to the gate operator. First, mount the C-clamp assembly to the end of the operator arm as shown. Next, if using a pull to open system, move the gate to the fully open position before attaching the clamps to the gate. Once your front bracket has been attached, use the jog buttons on the control board to move the gate to the desired closed position. 
Use the jog buttons as many times as necessary to fine tune the closed position. Once the position has been determined, press and hold the set button until you hear a beep and then release the set button. Your transmitter has been pre-programmed to connect to the control board. Now use your wireless remote to open the system fully until it stops by itself at the open position. Once the gate has reached the open position, the system will beep to confirm it has learned the limit setting. If using a push to open system, make sure the extended post pivot brackets have been installed and move the gate to the fully closed position before attaching the clamps to the gate. Move it to the desired open position. Press and hold the set button until you hear a beep and release the set button. Now use your wireless remote to close the system fully until it stops by itself at the closed position. Once the gate has reached the closed position, the system will beep to confirm it has learned the limit setting. Your system has an auto-close feature that will allow you to establish how long the gate will remain open before automatically closing. The auto-close time is set using real time and can be set from 6 seconds up to 1 hour. To establish the length of time your gate will remain open, Simply push the auto-close button until you hear a beep and the LED light begins blinking. Each blink represents one second. Using either your watch or by counting the number of blinks, wait until the desired time has elapsed and then push the auto-close button again and you will hear a beep. Release the button. The auto-close feature is now set. The LED light will remain on when the auto close feature is enabled. If you are using a vehicle sensor with your system, establish the placement of the sensor coil and dig a trench at least 12 inches deep from the sensor to a spot underneath the control box. Make sure the sensor is placed parallel to the drive and not perpendicular. Make sure that no vehicles or other metal objects are near the sensor and attach the sensor wire to the control board as shown. Attaching the sensor wires to the control board will automatically calibrate and program the sensor. If you're installing a zombie lock with your system, determine which method, bolts or tube gate brackets, you will be using to mount the zombie lock to your gate. If you are using the tube gate brackets, it's very important that you do not remove the nuts at the base of the brackets. These have been put in place to prevent the bracket from being screwed too deeply into the zombie lock, which may cause damage. Determine which of the screw holes on the zombie lock will be used to attach the bolts or clamps and attach them to the zombie lock. If possible, the zombie lock should be mounted on the same rail or at the same level as the operator on the other end of the gate. While holding the zombie lock in place, determine the position of the receiver bracket and mark holes for drilling. Pre-drill holes in the post and attach the receiver bracket. Fine-tune the position of the zombie lock and tighten the clamps. Use zip ties or some other method to run the zombie lock wire to the control board. Locate the proper terminal on the control board and connect the zombie lock wires to the board. 
please refer to the installation manual of the zombie lock for specific details. Once the lock has been installed, turn the system off and then back on. This will activate the locking system. If for any reason it becomes necessary to disconnect the zombie lock, then you should disconnect all zombie lock wires from the control board. Then turn the power off on the control box. Hold both jog buttons down simultaneously. And while holding the buttons, turn the power back on. Wait for the beeps for releasing the jog buttons. This will deactivate the locking system as though no lock had been installed. The key supplied with the zombie lock system will also override the lock. This system is operated by battery power and you must select either solar power or AC power to charge the battery. An AC transformer is included on all non-XP units. If you choose to charge your battery using AC power, you may run a low voltage wire, not included, to an outlet that is not more than 1,000 feet from the control box. Attach the low voltage wire to the control box as indicated. If you're using solar power to recharge your batteries, choose the placement of your solar panel with the maximum amount of exposure to the sun. Run the solar panel wire along the fence or buried underground to the control panel. You may extend the length of the wire up to a total of 100 feet by using not less than 16 gauge stranded wire. Please refer to our online solar guide for additional considerations regarding the type of system, location of installation, and the number of cycles expected each day to determine the proper number of solar panels required for your particular system. Now that your gate opener has been installed, there are a number of accessories that can be added to customize your system and are covered in other videos and illustrations on our website. If you need any individual support, please contact us at 850-898-1411. We are proud to be an American company that invests in our people, products, community, and great country. If you are a veteran, we thank you for your service and encourage you to take advantage of our military discount by contacting us directly for a coupon code. Please check back in the future as we continue adding additional videos. Thank you for trusting in Ghost Controls. We are honored to provide security, convenience, and peace of mind to you and your family.